So next I'm just going to do a little bit of an overview about brain anatomy. So I'm going to uh, let you know about some brain nuclei. Now when we're talking about the brain, we're actually using the word nuclei a little bit different. You are most likely familiar with nuclei or a nucleus already just from understanding the general anatomy of a cell. So in a cell we have a nucleus. The nucleus contains the DNA of the cell. When we're talking about the brain though, the nuclei has a bit of a different meaning. So in the brain, a nucleus is a cluster of neurons within the central nervous system. And neurons that are in a nucleus, that are in this cluster, they tend to have similar functions to each other and they have similar connections. Um, so, let, so these pictures here, this is looking at the hypothalamus and showing us several different nuclei within the hypothalamus. So the neurons that are living in these different nuclei, they're going to have similar functions and they will be sending signals to similar places. Um, and now those connections between the nuclei, they can send connections in bit, through big axon highways or tracks to very far regions, um, other regions in the brain. So for example, we could have um, we could have uh, tracks that are coming from this nucle nucleus in the hypothalamus that can send all the way up to um, the mesolimbic system or the prefrontal cortex to other regions in the brain. Now, when we're looking at one individual nucleus within the brain, it can actually have subnuclei within it or smaller clusters within that nucleus. Um, and so that's something that we are going to talk about when we are learning more about this particular nucleus right here called the arcuate nucleus. nucleus. Um, and again, as I mentioned here, axons that project from a nucleus, they will frequently go to um, uh, go through highways to different places. So the axons from this nucleus can travel to another nucleus within the hypothalamus or to another nucleus that is in a very far region in the brain. So those are brain nuclei. Okay, so now we're going to do some very, very superficial brain anatomy. Um, so within the, this series of lectures, we're going to talk about three regions of the brain. We are going to focus a lot on the hypothalamus. So that is this region right here, the hypothalamus. Um, the hypothalamus is just superior to this little guy, the pituitary gland. Um, so we have the pituitary gland and then the hypothalamus is really like the master regulator of the pituitary gland. So that's the hypothalamus. When we dig into the hypothalamus, we are going to focus on a few, on two specific nuclei within the hypothalamus. So two specific clusters of neurons within the hypothalamus. The first nucleus within the hypothalamus that we're going to talk about is the arcuate nucleus. We're going to abbreviate this as ARC. So the arcuate nucleus, the arcuate, the arcuate nucleus within the hypothalamus is just above the pituitary gland. Um, and then we're also going to talk about the paraventricular hypothalamus, which we're going to abbreviate as PVH. So the paraventricular hypothalamus is a little bit more superior. So that's the hypothalamus. We're also going to talk about the mesolimbic system. The mesolimbic system is made up of several brain nuclei that are kind of around this sort of circular region around here. Um, the two specific areas that we're going to focus on within the mesolimbic system are going to be back here, the ventral tegmental area or VTA, and then another nucleus up here called the nucleus accumbens, which we'll abbreviate as NAC. So the VTA, the ventral tegmental, uh, tegmental area, is more in the midbrain region. Whoops, pardon me. And then the nucleus accumbens is more in the forebrain region. And then the other region of the brain that we're going to talk about is the hindbrain. So this whole area back here is the hindbrain, which has a lot more responsibility for some autonomic, automatic types of responses. And the particular area we're going to focus on within the hindbrain is called the nucleus tractus solitarius. So that's going to be a region in here. So hindbrain, hypothalamus, mesolimbic system. We're going to dig into a few specific nuclei within each of these areas. The other thing that I want to talk about is how signals get to and from the central nervous system, to and from the brain, because there's a directionality to it. So in this image, what I'm showing you is the brain and the spinal cord. These make up the central nervous system. And then coming out of that, I'm showing you the vagus nerve, which is a big, big, huge nerve. It's one of the um, 12 cranial nerves that we have. The vagus nerve has signals uh, has signals uh, traveling from the brain out to the periphery, out to the different tissues. 
and those signals that are exiting the brain and traveling down the vagus out to the other tissues, those are called efferent signals. E for exiting the brain, efferent signals. Um, then the, uh, the vagus also has signals that are coming from the peripheral tissues and traveling back up the vagus into the brain. And those are called afferent signals. So afferent signals are going to originate in the peripheral organs and then travel up the vagus nerve to get to the brain. And afferent, that's for arriving at the brain. So in this section on the neurobiology of food intake, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of different afferent signals that travel up um, from the peripheral tissues like the gastrointestinal tract to signal up the vagus and send information to the brain.